Hey everyone, this is Steve Bishop from ProgrammingMadeEasy.com and today I've got another In My Opinion video for you guys. This is an opportunity for you guys to ask me whatever kind of questions that you'd like. And typically these are technology related questions or programming, you know, software development or even access related questions. But you guys are welcome to ask me anything that you'd like. And really, I can't do this show without your questions, so please, please, um, if you've got something on your mind, it doesn't have to be software related. It could be, you know, you just recently broke up with your girlfriend or something like that. Whatever you want to talk about. Heck, I've even talked about politics on this channel and that's it's kind of a taboo subject. But anyway, <clears throat> I really just want you guys to be able to feel like you can reach out to me and you can ask me your questions, uh, you know, that you just want some sort of, uh, you know, my opinion about. Um, so, uh, with that being said, how do you guys reach out to me? How do you guys ask me those questions? Well, the first way that you can do it is to just go to the comment section below this video and just drop your question in there. And if I've got time and it's a good one, I'm definitely going to cover it. Uh, the other opportunity for you guys is to reach out to me on Facebook because I do have a channel, a page set up on Facebook. Uh, you can find it pretty easy. It's under the username Programming Made E Z, and again, that's the letter E and the letter Z. Uh, you can also do a search for Programming Learning Center, and because that's actually the name that I've given the page. So you can go to Programming Learning Center, or you can go to Programming Made Easy, and either way, you should be able to find my page. So um, I'll even include a link uh, in the description of this video, so you guys can can find it. So uh, today's question actually comes from Facebook. Now, this, uh, this question comes from Christopher Goge. I believe I pronounced that correctly. It's G-O-J. And Christopher says, what would you say to a manager who thinks that access is not sufficiently robust for a multi-user database? Three potential users at present, not that many in the future. And he says they want to use SharePoint, which I know nothing about. Well, Christopher, um, <clears throat> first of all, Microsoft is not a very robust product when it comes to the multi-user experience. You're, you're, who you're talking about, your, you know, your manager is kind of right. No, not entirely right, and I'll get into that in just a minute. But if you just use Access all by itself as both the front end and the back end, or even if you just, you know, distribute one file, you know, if you just distribute one Access database file around to everyone then everybody's gonna have a different version of the data. It's not a very good multi-user experience. And so if that's what your boss is thinking would happen, uh, then absolutely he's right uh, or she, but that's not the whole story with Access. And maybe your manager just needs to be informed of what Access can do because you can split up an Access database into both a front end and a back end, which can get you quite a few concurrent users. You can have you know, three or four, it's, Access is very capable of handling three to four different people in your database uh, at one time, and, you know, if it's an Access database. Now, you do need to split it up. You need to put your tables into their own special database and move that off and put it, you know, somewhere on the network and share that file. And then you have your front end, which is, you know, what you actually distribute to everyone. And that's a perfectly valid scenario. I've, I've set that up many, many times. Uh, now, if your manager is really, really concerned about expansion and more users and concurrency of data, and you know, if your database is going to get larger than two gigs, you're going to need something more robust as a back end. But here's the thing. Access is capable of connecting to all of those sources. So if you decide to move your, your data tables to Microsoft SQL Server, not only can Access connect to a Microsoft SQL Server, but this, the, the, uh, the SQL Server importing tools have access as one of the data table types that it can import very easily. There's just little special tools. I've even done videos on importing data from access to Microsoft SQL Server. So you can get a very nice, big, robust SQL Server as your backend that hosts your data. And then you just still continue to distribute the same front end file that everyone already has, that's the same file. And so you don't have to go through some sort of, you know, entire migration process that, you know, the front end needs to be, um, you know, 
reorganize. I mean, there's some changes you have to do. So you can obviously get it connected to the SQL server, but you don't have to do this massive rebuild of the front end. The front end is still going to operate just the same way that it did when it was running off the access back end. Now, that's one of the primary reasons I really like access, at least to start something, right? If access is a rapid application development environment, you can build applications very quickly. Uh, you build your forms, you build your reports, you build your queries, and you know you can build your tables very easily. You can design your application right up front in a very small, little, easy way. And then if it if you need to expand upon it, make it bigger and make it grow, you move that database into a you know an actual server like a SQL server, but you still keep the front end, so you've got it split up but you still have the same tools, you have the same user interface, you have the same reporting, you have the same queries, all that stuff still exists in your application. So you gradually migrate to a bigger, better solution with more multi-user experience. And then if you get really big and you need to do something web-based, well, now you've got all your data tables out on the SQL server, you can still interact using your access database front end, but now if you're saying, okay, but we need a web portal of some sort, some sort of web application that also accesses the same data. Now that you've got that data moved over to Microsoft SQL Server, you can build something like an ASP.NET website or a PHP or a Ruby on Rails or you know a, a Java. You can build all of those different web platforms and utilize the data that has already existed. And, you know, your business has been building off of this access database for, you know, one or two years, maybe more. They've been able to put in all the data that they need to in this simple little access database. Now they've got this big database full of all the data that they need. They don't want to go to some brand new solution that's going to require a complete rebuild and a reconstruction of all the data tables. So having started out with access, then moving the data to Microsoft SQL Server, then now that the data is on SQL Server, you can bring in pretty much any other platform you want because it will be able to connect and, and get to the same data while still you can maintain the same user front end with Microsoft Access as a desktop environment. So you don't, Access is, is only as limited as you want it to be, right? Uh, it can't do web development. Well, it can. It does web apps with integration with SharePoint. But once you do that, you no longer have the VBA code behind it. And the forms are pretty simplistic. They're not really all that great. I, I never really liked working with the Microsoft web app, uh, you know, with the with the web app version of Microsoft Access. So um, and part of that is also because of the integration with SharePoint. Now, speaking of SharePoint. I have some experience with SharePoint. I was a Moss 2007 administrator for a long time. I did IT, guys, before I did software development. I was in IT. And one of the products I supported occasionally was SharePoint 2007. Now, I've done a little bit with some newer versions of, of SharePoint. They've gotten a little bit better in some areas. But I can tell you without a doubt, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that SharePoint is an absolute nightmare to manage. You need a specialist to manage SharePoint. You're not going to be able to just have some manager that is sort of tech savvy go and manage your SharePoint uh, server. Okay, there's a lot of different things involved. There's a SQL Server backend. Okay, because SharePoint is actually having all its data hosted on SQL Server. There's an IIS version that has to be running that's going to be running web pages because that's what SharePoint is. It's running off of a website, and you're also needing some. There's some team stuff that's in the background as well. Uh, and all these things just kind of work together in order to do it. And there's really no reporting, right? There's no reports in SharePoint. With Access, you get share, you get reports. So you can, you know, with Access, you accumulate all this data. You've got forms that you enter data into. You've got uh, queries that you can go and, and ask specific, you know, you can aggregate your data to get very specific numbers and, and explore the data that you've stored. Like, you know, if you wanted to find out how many, uh, how much money did you guys make last year or on a, how many of a particular widget did you sell last year or how many customers went delinquent on their account last year? You, know, you could do all of these type of aggregation of data type of things. You can't really do that in SharePoint. There's there's nothing, there's no query apparatus um, unless you get Microsoft Dynamics. So, and that's something else entirely that, that 
requires, again, a specialist that needs to know how to use Microsoft Dynamics to go and build these special reports and build these queries and put them in place. But you've got all that built in right in with Access, and you don't need a specialist to do it. You just need a few tutorials online to show you how to build reports and how to build queries, and voila, now everybody can go build their own queries and build their own reports. So, you know, because Access is a very simple interface for developing and creating these things. That's what it's for. It's designed specifically for what they call the power user, where somebody who is technology, you know, is technologically savvy can build some of these things. That's not the case with SharePoint. You need a specialist to manage SharePoint, somebody who really, really understands and knows it. And I know this firsthand because security principles, when something breaks, oh my gosh, SharePoint is very, very difficult. If somebody needs access to something and they're not getting it, it doesn't come up or whatnot, there's a multitude of different reasons why that could be happening. The database could be down, there could be something about the security protocol, uh, the security principle for the application pools, there could be, um, you know, the security, the application pool from IIS needs to have access to the SQL server. So you need someone that's gonna manage the SQL server connection. So you've got, I mean, that's something you'd need anyway with access, but you still need to have somebody that knows how to do that and knows how integration services works with Microsoft SQL Server, right? You need somebody that knows that type of connection. Then of course, somebody that knows how to run IIS, which is a web-based application, you know, your web host. Somebody needs to know how to go in and, and set up those security principles whenever there's a problem. SharePoint, when you initially do the development, it'll create all these default accounts and stuff for you and set it all up. But once something goes wrong, you're left in the dust. It becomes a very difficult thing to try to troubleshoot and you're gonna need that specialist. And not only that, but SharePoint does not is not a relational database. So if I've got um, lists of customers and I've got lists of, of item, you know, like uh, inventory items and I've got, you know, lists of uh, addresses and lists of phone numbers. Well, the problem is, is that that doesn't really link together very well. You can't in SharePoint really take these different lists and figure out how they all work together in a very simple way. There's, there's ways of doing it, but it's very complicated. And again, you need that, that, uh, that SharePoint specialist to do it. Whereas with Access, I mean, it's just regular, you know, it's regular tables with relational database management systems where, you know, you have a foreign key and a primary key. And, you know, based upon the primary key of one table, you put that primary key into you know at, into the foreign key column of, of your secondary table, and that's how you link the two tables together. It's a very simple thing, um, but you don't get that type of simplicity with SharePoint. You, you just can't do it. Um, and again, the reporting functionality that you get out of Access, you don't get that with SharePoint. You have to bring in some other product to do it. Uh, there's some things you can do with SharePoint to do it, um, and probably the main reason why why most people do go with SharePoint is because it does have a really nice document sharing facility. So if you've got a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or something like that that you want to share and you need some sort of approval process so that, you know, somebody writes up on, you know, types up a draft of a Word document, they can hand it off to their manager who does editing and then they approve it and then they hand it off to their manager who might make one final edit and approve it. These are called workflows. Um, you can do that sort of thing with SharePoint and you can't really do that in Access. I mean, you can, but you'd have to build that system yourself. Uh, so that's just, that's probably, if, if that's the main reason why they wanna go with SharePoint, okay, I guess I can see that. But most businesses that I know of, they're looking to do a lot more than that. They wanna be able to take and, and you know keep track of their inventory, keep track of their customers, keep track of contact information, and you know, keep track of, um, you know, their, their different sales items or, or services that they offer. Uh, they want to be able to do billing. They want to keep track of employee records, you know, stuff like that. That's just going to be really, really difficult to do. And there's no, you know, there's no joining of the data in SharePoint, but that's exactly what Access is for. It's to help kind of organize and structure your data and be able to ask and, you know, query the data to get the, the information that you need. So, that would be why I'd say, now, all of this is predicated upon what I think your business needs, right? I, and I don't know what your business needs. That's the conversation you guys really need to have. What is it that you guys want this product to do? And then can it do that? Can it do all of those things easily? Now, um, 
like I said, if it's just document sharing, that's all that they want to do. Okay, SharePoint's fine. Uh, you know, maybe if you want to have a, a little bit of tracking of, you know, here's some of the customers that we have, and that's all that you're going to keep track of. It's just the customers and nothing else. You don't want it to tie together in any way. Okay, SharePoint might be able to do some of that stuff. But if you're looking for a very robust reporting facility, you're looking for something that's going to aggregate the data for you and give you some you know, some good insights into how your business is operating. And you want forms that allow people to, you know, to be very targeted. You can build a very specific form for a very specific per type of person so that they enter in the data exactly how you want them to. And they don't mess with the data. They don't get it wrong. They don't, there's no opportunity for them to get it, you know, to, to enter in some really bad data that can screw with your system. If you want those forms that make it easy for data entry, you want the aggregation with the queries you want to be able to create reports and graphs and charts and stuff that's all stuff that you're going to be able to do and access and you're really not going to be able to do very easily in sharepoint it's going to take a lot of work and it's going to take a specialist to do it that you're going to have to hire unless you have someone already on staff that knows how to do it and then when you're talking about expanding out what if you want to grow right what if you want to expand to something else or you know, make it available on other platforms, like uh, say your phone, right? So you want to make a, an application available for your phone. Well, if you're going to be doing that with uh, something like SharePoint, well, you're really stuck with just the web interface. You can't build a, a phone application. But if you have a SQL server, if you have a server that's hosting the data, it's not that difficult in order to build an application that's going to run on your phone. And now, I say not that difficult. It is difficult. I mean, that's real genuine development that needs to be worked. That's not something that a power user is going to be able to really do. Um, but you are going to at least be able to expand at that point. When you guys decide you do want an iPhone app or an Android app or a Windows 10 phone app. Well, do they even have a Windows 10 phone? I think, yeah, they do. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Right, because they, they dropped Windows 8.1. I know they they dropped that that whole thing, um, but I think there's still some phones out there that can run Windows apps. So anyway, so the bottom line is, if you really want something that's going to be, uh, you know, expanded upon later on. So if this is a five year plan, SharePoint might not be the solution there because SharePoint's only going to be a web application that you're only going to be accessing, um, you know, through web portals, right, through web pages. Uh, and you can't really build a, a phone app to do that. Well, you can, but it's it's kind of complicated. Um, but if you're looking for doing some more expansive things and you want to grow your application all the while, right? You want to start out with something small, something simple, and then grow from there. That's what Access is really there for, so that you can build a very simple, easy application at first, and then as your needs grow, you build the application further and further. Now, the last thing I'm going to mention here, and this is this is a big thing here, um, is that when you know how to be very specific with your access development process, so when you're really, really good, like when you've reached a really you know, higher level than even a power user. Like you're almost a, a genuine developer. You develop applications. You can actually use Access as just the front end tool to connect to all those other database sources. So it can connect to things like Oracle. It can connect to, um, you know, Microsoft SQL Server. It can connect to MySQL. It can connect to Excel spreadsheets. It can connect to CSV files. It can connect to any type of data source that you want. And it does it very simply. Right, that's what Access is great for, is it can connect to all these different sources. And you can aggregate the data from all of these different sources. And you can export the data to all these other different sources. You can do all this source data manipulation and exporting and importing, and that's really what Access is great for. And again, you can't do any of that type of thing with SharePoint. But once you understand how you can do all of that and that you don't need Access to be that back end, you can use all those other different types of data sources as your backend. Then Access becomes just strictly a user interface, right? That's all it is. It's just the forms, it's just the queries, and it's just the reports. So you don't need, you know, you, you don't need the Jet Engine or the Ace Engine running behind your application. You can use those other types of data sources. Now, once you achieve that, 
once you achieve autonomy away from the ACE or jet engine, uh, you know, where, where Access is not doing any of the actual processing of the data. What it's doing is it's strictly querying, it's doing what we call pass-through queries directly to the databases, right? It's asking directly from the, from the source for the data and it comes back and Access doesn't do any of the aggregation itself. It asks those other server services. Once you get to this autonomous situation where, where you don't rely upon the, J, the Jet or Ace engine, and access is now just your user interface, you really have a very robust user interface that has been built from this little seedling. And it can be deployed to lots and lots of users, okay? And I'll give you this very specific scenario. One of the companies that, that we do business with, they have between 40 or 50 different applications, kind of depends on which server you're connecting to but they have five terminal servers. Each of them have between, you know, you know, like about 40 applications. And each one of these terminal servers has around 100 to even 200 people connecting to it simultaneously. That's one of our clients. They're all using access, okay? All of them. So you've got in, in 40 to 50 different applications. Now, each user might have three, four, or five of these applications open at the same time on a terminal server. So that's one server hosting 100 or maybe more different users, all of them with three to four different applications all open simultaneously. We can accomplish that with Access. User, the user interface, as long as Access is just strictly the user interface and it's asking the source for the information directly to pass through queries, you can do this because it's just a user interface. All it does is run the forms and queries and reports. It doesn't need to do all of the processing in order to make it happen. It's got some BBA code on it that you know does a little bit of some memory stuff, but as long as you do some proper development and you pay really close attention to what you're doing during the development process, you can make a very slim and functional access front end that is secure and, and you know, doesn't really, uh, you know, it's easy to develop and you can build upon very quickly because, you know, writing a new report is easy. Writing a new query is easy. Adding a table to the whole system is actually relatively simple to do. Make, be, making a new uh, bit of code work and making new classes and stuff, that's all very simple to do in Access. It's not that difficult and it doesn't require some, you know, major deployment scheme. So it's just something to think about. Um, Access can do a lot of things. There are some things it can't do, okay? I'm, I'm not gonna fool you here. There's some there's some things that Access can't quite do, uh, but it does do a lot of things and it can be a very useful multi-user experience. Um, and, and really, like I said, I've, I've got you know hundreds of people, hundreds of versions of Access running simultaneously, all accessing the same data sources. Uh, it's very possible. It doesn't, it, it's not a, a, it's not a hurdle to use access as long as you understand how to do it and how to write all these pass through queries and how to avoid using the Jetterace engine. So there you guys go. I hope that that answers your question, Christopher. Um, I know I've taken a lot of time. I've pontificated pretty extensively here, uh, but I think I've probably covered it. So again, if you guys have one of these questions that you want me to answer, uh, you know, you just want to come for some advice or some help or something like that. Um, you know, again, it needs to be opinion based. So if you've got a very specific question about your database uh, or your application, I'm probably not going to be able to use that because these real specific questions don't really work too well in a general, in my opinion, video. But if you've got a general question about anything, anything under the sun that you want to talk about, it doesn't have to be software or, uh, you know, or, or a tech support type of questions. It can be about anything. Um, just again, just drop me a comment in the comment section below with your question, or you can reach out to me on Facebook. And again, if it's a really good one and I got the, uh, you know, I got the time to do it, um, I certainly will talk about it. So anyway, until I see you guys at the next video, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.